Pioneer Studios here, again, and we're back for more Super Mario Bros. 3. Now last time, yeah, this is, this is episode 6. The last time we started off the Ice World, World 6. And now we're gonna finish it up. I promise. And I know at the beginning of the LP I said I was gonna skip World 7. But I think I'm gonna give it a try. Alright, well, here's a cool thing about this level. If you shoot these things frozen in ice blocks, you can not freeze them. Like that. Pretty cool. You can also do that to these munchers, so, so be careful. You, you really have to be careful on this stage. Just like that, if you, 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 you worry, you need like me. Dummy, stupid, poo-poo head. There we go, I still have a look at complete... Sorry about that, um... Yeah, that's that level complete. And now we're on to the fortress. Which, this is one of the trickier fortresses. Okay, so like I was saying, this is one of the more challenging fortresses, especially if you're not careful. And if you're an ignoramus like me. I can die a lot. I know what happened to me before, where we kind of got stuck. Although I never got frustrated, obviously, because... Well, one, I have plenty of lives, and two, everything's on me, so... Especially since it's on a CRT TV, with no lag. But even then, I could have a no... A no lag solution on a flat screen. With game mode. Which, I would switch to a flat screen if it did, those things didn't drop their video constantly. Like, I swear, on my all one flat screen back at my dorm, it, can, it keeps fucking blacking out and... Screwing me over on The Simpsons Hit and Run. And I was recording it for the first time, especially. The second time it didn't happen as much because I looked at my capture window. But even then, it might not be so much the TV as it is the actual. Like, there's these blue rotating things you gotta jump on. I, those were in my Super Mario Galaxy 2 LP, so there's a similar set piece. Which, like I said, they weren't my favorite because. Well, it didn't happen that time, but it's really easy to fall if you don't time your jump perfectly on those things. And... Uh, so many, it's just not really my favorite thing in, in the world, you know? I'm not a huge fan of when they're like a perfectly timed button is the difference between Continuing the stage or having to restart it. You know? Like on a single precise press. Also, I'm dead. I'm probably just gonna P Wing this one because you already saw what the, the, the airship is like. Oops, I didn't need to do that. Right. Hold on a minute. Sorry about that. Let's just um go back to the airship and uh, I'll use my one of my P wings on it because I kind of just want to get it real quick. Just so I don't have to um, do a fast forward because I don't really see the reason for this for that in this in this case. Yeah, for some reason, so my capture window is lagging behind a little bit on my TV. So if there's a bit of a desync in like my uh, my reactions, that's the reason why. If it seems like it's a little desync, there's not much I can do about that. Sorry.
God, I'm turning into a Canadian where I'm apologizing for everything. <laughs> well, no, no offense to Canadians, obviously. But... What am I talking about? Alright. <sighs> but, uh, let's not screw this up. There we go. Here's one of the, not one of the, one of the trickier Koopaling bosses, because he spawns in these balls. I think it's Lenny Koopa. Hey, hold on, how about a breakfast churro? More breakfast churros for Lenny? I can't really, I, mean, I can't really think of any Lenny quotes from The Simpsons itself, the show. I can really only think of them from Hidden One. Look closer, Lenny! It's King Homer. Yeah. And as you can tell, I have been watching The Simpsons recently, and I've talked about that in my Hit and Run LP that I re-recorded. Yeah, but this is, here's World 7, as it's called Pipe World, or whatever, Pipe Land. Pipe Maze. <laughs> yeah, that's not a euphemism or anything. Because, yeah, all these worlds have unique names, which we'll see them in the credits, but, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna give this world a shot, because, you know, I usually skip it with the, the, um, the warp whistle. But by, by the time I get to the airship, I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna use a few wing because the, the airship is really tedious compared to the other ones. This, my problem with World 7 is that a lot of the levels are more tedious than the others. It's a bit of a lapse. And the other way is great quality. Alright, three so this, is, this is the first annoying puzzle element. I mean, it's not super obnoxious, but... I mean, there's some good levels in World 7, but it's just all really overshadowed by those... There's a nice select few that kind of ruin the world for me. 7-1 is completely fine. It's, it's a really cool change of pace too, because it's vertical. Which, by the way, this is the first Mario game to have vertical levels in it. Same thing for auto-scrollers. So those note blocks, keep those in mind. I'm not going for all those points, but I can't do about it. Oh, there's the part where... The nerd... Angry video game nerd. Like, went up in the pipe and then got hit by the Koopas before he could even see him, which I'm pretty sure he probably faked that, because those things don't spawn on top of the pipe. He has a. that guy, uh, James, he, he, which is, uh, James Rolfe, the AVGM, you should know that by now. Hey, he has admitted to kind of faking some things in the packs for comedic value. Which, I'm personally, I would be against doing that. Like, everything you see in my Let's Plays is gonna be 100% genuine. Like, all the things I praise and everything I criticize, that's all... my genuine feelings. And I do, I play the games the best I can, even if I absolutely suck at most of them. There's this one specific level in World 7 that really grinds my gears. Which we're gonna be using probably a cloud to skip over it. Oh yeah, also there's a glitch in this. Like, if you remember that one level in World 3 that had, the, had that one pipe? I'm not being very descriptive, but it was surrounded by... Like, um, blue blocks that you can pick up. And then go down to the dairy with the cheap sheeps. Yeah, if you do this certain glitch, you can sort of make this Mario disappear and then completely soft lock yourself. And I think this is the only other level you can do that. Which I don't know why we would, would want to do that because uh, obviously it's a soft lock. And since it's the NES version, you would have to restart by resetting. 
And these old games on the NES soft walk is, is a death sentence. And as you can see, these, these levels involve pipes. This is called pipe maze after all. So you can, you can kind of expect that. But uh, here's the area where I'm where it's approaching the one satyr I really dislike. One of the... Not, it's not this one, that, that was entirely me. That was, that was just, that was completely on me, but... Like, yeah. I don't, I don't even know why I jumped I and mean, I just kept holding right, I'm not sure why I did that. So yeah, don't do that. You can learn from my idiot mistakes. This level is relatively, relatively fun. Yeah, I don't think you can slide into those things. That probably damages you. I want to have the fire fire anyway, so I could, you know, honestly take these out easier. Like I said, the choice between fire flower and Raccoon Leaf or Tanuki Suit is... Those solid coins? That's strange. I mean, the choice between those two is choosing between strength versus mobility. That's kind of how the Fire Flower versus the Cape is. Well, not so much in the world, because, I mean, the, the Raccoon Leaf's attack is really, really weak. It's like a, it's just a dinky tail swipe. It's really short range and you can't do it very quickly. But Super Mario World kind of changes that so where the cape is kind of a dominant dominant strategy, if you will. Not, not really dominant strategy. That might not be the right word to use. And this right here is a puzzle stage. It kind of, this kind of reminds me of Super Mario Land 2. There's this one section in one of the stages where you can hit blocks like that. Which means you can come up here and grab that. Yeah. And there's the one you can pass through. This might be wrong, but I'm still gonna go down here anyway. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's the one you don't want to go down. Yeah, there's a section in Super, one of the levels in Super Mario Land 2, which you'll see when I LP that game. Like, there's a bunch of pipes lined up. Uh, and... There's one, they all have openings on top, above them. Or yeah, just above them. That's what I meant to say. And... They... There's one of them... That leads to Alright, there's one of them you have to pass through on top. Alright, I'll just go back up to this this pipe. Hold me up, poop up. Well I'm I am i am trying to explain this. It's like it's just like that section that we just passed. Where you gotta, there's this one pipe you have to find that instead of like spawning a block, it spawns an opening. There's just an opening there. Almost made that. There we go. Okay, there's an opening up there in one of them that lets you beat the stage. I, I, I mean, it might have been actually where just like it's either a different area because it's just for items, sort of. And it, then it... I know exactly how to explain this now. I'm, I'm kind of really scatterbrained with my explanation. There's like a section of pipes, just like the one that I was talking about. And it was just for items. 
so it's when you could go down and there was like you could jump back up. I think it was in one of the haunted house levels. Or something where you can go down to an area with a bunch of coins and there's these Jason mask looking enemies. That you could get sort of uh, you know, fight down there and then you go up these pipes and it's sort of like this section. Where you get some of them, one of them has an opening where you let you go back up and most of them have items and everything like that. The coin blocks. Wow, it took me like three minutes to explain that, Jesus. That's what happens when you do commentary live, you know? Yeah, this, this level overall has a bunch of tricky puzzles that have little coin blocks that block you and stuff. Invisible coin blocks. God, he got out. That's not the way we gotta go. I'm pretty sure the coin, yeah, there's coin blocks here. So we gotta create a bridge. And then we gotta get to that pipe over there. Which obviously, you keep like going through here with these blue blocks. I'm not sure I was, well, I wasn't going right, but. And then we get up. Oh, wait. Do that. Go up here. And boom, there you are. There you go. And then there's a bridge you can walk over. I'm pretty sure that's the end. Yes, it is. Oh, by the way, speaking of these end of stage things, before the episode ends. Apparently, Mario 3 was confirmed by Miyamoto to be just a stage play. You can see we're back there. And some of these things are held up by, like, um, you know, stage cables. Some of the platforms are suspended by that. Suspension cables. And then going into that black area after you beat the stage, it looks like you're like, walking off stage. But I personally, I don't think it's... I'm going to go against Can because... Even though Miyamoto says that it's just a stage play, I don't believe it. I don't buy it. I think it really, it's an actual event that took place. It's just it has the aesthetic of a stage play. Yell at me all you want and disagree. Like, yeah, how dare you doubt the, the word, grain word of Miyamoto himself. But I'm sorry, it's not a stage play. It's an actual event that took place. And you can't, you can't change my outlook on that. Why would you want to believe that if that's what I believe? Whatever theory I want, you want. But yeah, that's gonna do it for episode 8. I think this is episode 6 of Super Mario Bros. 3. Um, join me next time when I continue World 7, and I might be able to finish it, but I'm not entirely sure. So, yeah, I'll see you then. Bye.